Um, praise God, praise God, praise God. Um, blessings, people of the Lord. This is Christ the Entirety Foundation. Um, this is touching the heart of reality section, TV section. Um, this is doctrine and balance. This is the teaching of the word of the Lord. This is doctrine and balance. Um, this is your brother and your deacon Philip from the Salvation Prayer Mission, um, Ghana. Today we are looking at the message which we have titled the mystery and the ministry of peace the mystery and the ministry of peace and uh, we want to look at the topic which we have uh, put together the grace of adaptation the grace of adaptation and we want to see um, how the peace of God works in our lives so that we can appropriate and angulate ourselves into such posture that we can allow the things that are most surely believed among us to have a blessing and effect upon our lives. But uh, before we go into the word, let us have a short word of prayer believing that the lord will help us and so father we thank you we bless you we glorify your name we magnify your name we say indeed all things are into being because of your grace thank you for your creation thank you for everything that you keep doing for us we say lord we are grateful where will we be? What will we be? How will we have been without you and even your love? And so we thank you for your priceless love that you have shared abroad in our hearts by your spirit. This moment we ask that you help us. Precious Holy Spirit, teach us the word of the Lord. Bring to us the understanding that we need to grasp in this time that our Lord Jesus, even your son, may be glorified. We know that you are the one who will teach us. We thank you. We bless you. Father, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we have prayed. And all the saints of the Lord said, Amen. Um, people of God, like we have put together, we are looking at the mystery and the ministry of peace okay we are trying to look at how the peace of god um administer its grace in our life or how the grace of god administers peace in our lives and i want to um, bring that balance to um, this word so that we can have um, that understanding of the word of the lord okay so come with me to the book of philippians chapter 4 verse 4 to 7 okay philippians chapter 4 verse 4 to 7 i read it says it says that rejoice in the lord always again i say rejoice let your moderation be known unto all men. It says, let your moderation be known unto all men. That is to say, let your gentleness be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Okay, it says in the verse 6, it says that be careful for nothing. Okay, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. It says that be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Then in the verse 7, he says that, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart it shall guard your heart and mind through christ jesus so um paul is saying that paul is speaking 
in his writing to the book of the people of Philippi or the Philippians that uh, they should be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and by supplication, coupled with thanksgiving, let our request be made known unto God. Our request should be made known because of um, um, the, 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 the multitude of the things that we are seeking from the Lord, the answers that we want from God. Uh, maybe because of the tribulations, the trials, or the temptations that we may be going through. Paul is saying that uh, we should be careful for nothing. That is to say we should be anxious for nothing. But um, in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And Paul is saying that after that you have made your request known unto God, this is what happens. Look at the verse 7. It says, after that you have made your request known unto God. Then he now says that, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Now, what I want us to take notice is that, what I want us to take notice is that, Paul in this scripture never mentioned of answered prayer. But Paul is saying that when we are able to make our request known unto God by prayer, and supplication coupled with thanksgiving, then now the peace of God, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, it shall keep our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. That peace shall guard our heart, and it shall also guard our mind through Christ Jesus. Now, this I want us to understand that, you see, the ministry of peace is not that um, when you pray and you bring your supplications or your intercessions and then um, your thanksgiving to God, then God releases the answer. That may not be the entire um, 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 like understanding to this scripture because Paul speaking didn't say that when we make our request known unto God, God will give us answers. But he says that the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. So it means that through Jesus Christ, we have a certain level of peace. And that peace, what it, what it does is that it administers itself in our life, which is the grace of God. So the grace of God through Christ administers a level of peace that surpasses all understanding in our life. And what it does is that our request may not be answered. I am not saying our request will not be answered, but I am saying that our request may not be answered. And even though it may not be answered, what God will do is that God is going to administer his peace in our heart so that that which is troubling our mind, so that that which is troubling our heart, we can have the peace of God that passes all understanding in our life so that even though I may have prayed concerning this situation, that situation, that thing, that challenge, that illness, that sickness, or that problem, or that tribulation, that trial, or that temptation, I may not receive answers to what I am asking for or I may not receive answers to the supplications that I am bringing. I may not receive answers to the prayers that I have prayed or I am praying for. But there will be a kind of peace that God will shoot into my life through Jesus Christ. Which is the grace of God that will, will make me adapt to the situation. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you getting this? It may not necessarily be that God will bring the answer. But it may also be that, yes, God can 
can bring the answer and you will have your peace. Just like it was said in Exodus 14, 14, that I will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. But what I, I want you to also get, what I want to tease out in this passage is that Paul didn't just say that, um, then we will receive answers and then we will have the peace of God. He's saying that, after that we have made our request known unto God, then the peace of God that passes all understanding will come and then we will have peace. Are you getting it? It says, then the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep our heart and our mind through Christ Jesus our Lord. So our, our prayers may not be answered. What we are asking God, we may not receive yet, but there is a kind of peace that God will shoot into your heart, that God will shoot into your mind that the things that are troubling your heart and the things that are troubling your mind, that peace of God can come upon your life, that what or that which troubles you no longer troubles you. Even though the problem may still exist, the temptation may still exist. The trial may still exist. You may still be going through the process. You may still be, be, be going through the, the tribulation or the trial or the temptation. But there will be a kind of peace that God will bring to you. And that is what I want us to take notice from this place. That this is something that God does. Even though God may not bring the answers yet. Or God may not have yet answered us. But there is an instrument called grace, which is peace, that God can bestow upon a man that that which makes him or her anxious will now not, not baffle such a man, will now not perplex such a man. Um, something that disturbs a person may no longer disturb the person not that the thing is not there or the thing does not exist anymore but god shoots a kind of peace into our life that what becomes problem no longer becomes problem what we are anxious of no longer are not anxious of what gives us worry through the heart and the mind we do not consider anymore. And that is the instrumentality of the peace of God administered through the grace of God upon our lives. Are you getting this? That is what I, I, I want you to get. So when you come to Colossians, to Colossians chapter 3 verse 13 to 15, um, it says that, forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also, so also do ye, so also do ye. So you could see that, you could see that, you could see that it says that if a man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, it says, so also do ye. So you will see that when we allow ourselves by prayer, by supplication, and through thanksgiving, then we now receive something from God, which is the forgiveness, okay? So, things that I need to worry about because I cannot forgive this brother or I cannot forgive that brother because this brother stepped on my toe or that brother stepped on my shoe or this brother did this to me or that sister did this to me. You see, it says that even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is love. So you will know that when we pray, the love of God will envelop our heart. Then that same love that we have for God, we can express it towards his people. Are you getting it? Because we live with um, our fellow um, human beings and like it always is, um, when two people or three people live in a space, there can be um, um, there can be problems, there can be challenges, there can be um, one or two things that may not be of Christ. But when we allow the things of God, which one of it is the love of God, when we allow it to rule in our midst, this is what it gives. So through this, you will see that it says that um, 
when we are able to forbear one another and forgive one another, that if any man have a quarrel against any, he says, even as Christ forgave us, so also do we also forgive. So, and it says that above all things, above all these, above all these things, it says put on charity or put on love, which is the bond of perfection. So, there is the place of perfection which love, which only love can do. You see, when we get to that place, when we are anxious, when we are perplexed, when we are going through a lot of things, when we forbear one another, when you hold me, when I am falling or when I am down or when I am perplexed or when I am, when you hold me out of love, there will be some kind of peace that God will bring upon me that I, I, I will know that I am not alone. Not that, not that um, we know that we do not have Christ. We know that we have Christ, but Christ can also work within our midst and among us through one of us. So Christ through you can, 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 can administer the love of God in my life and such will bring peace to my life, which God will bring into my life life are you getting it then he says that in the verse 15 he says and let the peace of god rule in your heart to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful so you see the connection um when we allow the love of god to work on us to work through us it means that we allow the holy spirit of god we allow god to administer his love and his peace among us and upon us and through that our heart our heart our heart receives the peace of god so in the bible says let the peace of god it is something that we are commanded to because we must allow ourselves to allow the peace of God flow through us to our brethren. To allow the peace of God move through us to other people. Are you getting it? So it says that, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. And the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. Are you getting it? So this is how the peace of God is being administered in our lives. Do you get it? It could be directly through God and it could also be um, God through the brethren to us. So God could just put his grace upon us directly, impacting us by the presence of the Holy Spirit directly, by whispering um, his whispers of Zion into our heart, which is the echoes of eternity by his spirit in our lives. And it can also be that God through um, any human being that is around that he can administer his peace in our life that will guard our heart and the peace of God will rule over our heart. So when you read the book of, for example, for example, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. Let us see. It says that, And blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. You see, when we make the Lord our hope, when we make God our hope, it says, For he shall be as the tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river. And shall not see when heat cometh. You see, he shall not see when heat cometh. I want you to take notice of this. He said, he shall not see when the heat cometh. But her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful. He shall not be anxious. In the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Now, this is what I want you to get. He says, when we make God our hope, it allows God to administer his peace upon us. And we said that this is the section where we are talking about the adaptation of grace or the grace of adaptation. That is to say, we, we may not receive the answers we need, but uh, there, will, there may still be problem. There may still be chaos. Economy may still be hard. But you see, God can still administer his grace upon us that we will have peace even 
through this economic crisis, we can have peace. Even through um, the tribulations we go through, we can have the peace of God through the trials and the temptations that we still go through. Are you getting it? So, so the Bible says that when we make God our hope, we shall be as we shall be as a tree that is planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her root by the rivers and shall not see when the heat cometh okay but her leaves shall be green and shall not be anxious in the year of drought neither shall cease from yielding fruit so you see we we may still have the chaos we may still have all the economical crisis we may still have um the ups and the downs we may still have things not working things may not be working we may still have that challenge we may still be going through a lot of things that we cannot explain that we may not be able to endure but you see god will give us a certain level of peace that will enable our heart that will enable our mind to to have the same mind of christ and we will not be anxious because God will administer a certain level of peace in our heart. Do you see that? So he says that, and shall not be anxious or shall not be careful in the year of drought because we know our God and we believe God. So in the, in the adaptation of grace, which is the mystery and then the ministry of peace, this is how the peace of God works in our life. Yes, we may receive the answer and we may have the peace of God. Yes, God can fight for us and we will receive peace and our life will be okay. And yet also, God may not answer us, but God will still administer peace in our life. And it will be because of the administration of peace, we will have the peace of God the lord so john chapter 14 verse 27 as i round up it says that peace i leave with you my peace i give unto you not as the world giveth give i unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid are you seeing the words of jesus i take it again it says peace i leave with you my peace i give unto you not as the world giveth Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So this is one of the things that the peace of God does. So you could see that we are going through the chaos. We are going through a lot of problems. We are going through a lot of challenges. Yes, like Paul said, um, let us pray. You see, by prayer and by supplication coupled with thanksgiving, let our request be made known unto God. So we can make the request known unto God. God may not bring the answer, but God may bring peace. That is what I want you to see. That it is not necessarily that when we pray, God answers. Sometimes it may be a process that God is taking you through. And that process that God is taking you through, you cannot pray it out. God still says you need to go through it because he allows that. So if God is allowing you to go through a process, will you now pray it off your life so that what you need to learn or what you need to endure, you escape it? No. So what God does is that he gives you the spirit of long suffering to endure. And in that, he administers his peace upon your life. That even you may not have received the answer, you may not... Um, have the things you are you have prayed for or you, you may you may you may not have seen progress in it but what you will notice is that god will administer peace in your heart which is grace he will bring that grace which is his peace he will put it upon your life that thing which seems anxious that that thing which which makes you anxious that thing which seems a burden upon you that thing which is weighing you down that thing which wants to pull you down that thing which which wants to break you, that thing which wants to pull you, that thing which wants to draw your attention away from God, you now trivialize it because there is something 
that God has put upon your life. So, um, this is what I want to bring to balance this moment so that we understand the way God works so that we don't just feel like, okay, um, if I have a problem and I pray, God will now give me answer straight and then I'll have my peace. Yes, it can be, but that is not entirely accurate because it is not every time that we pray that God answers. Sometimes, not that he does not want to answer us, but he answers us in his own time and that i'm saying that we need to bring balance to this thing so that we understand that even if god does not answer he will administer his peace in our heart i believe um you are blessed and you caught this word um if you have um put your comment there let us hear from you let us see what the word of the lord is doing in your life because we are also blessed here um never think that we are just here to bring to bring we are also being blessed because we also listen to what the lord gives to us and we apply it in our lives and we see the results of it and that is why we bring it to you as being commanded of the lord and by the lord let us share a word of prayer trusting that god will administer his peace in our heart that our heart and our mind will receive the peace of god that in this season we can still keep on trusting god and make god our hope father we thank you this moment we bless you mighty god we acknowledge your presence your power in our midst thank you because you have not left us Thank you for not leaving us orphans or comfortless. We know that you are with us, our Lord Jesus. You will know that you are with us by your spirit, by your spirit and through your spirit. And so, Lord, we ask for your peace in this season. Many answers we are seeking for we may not have received, but as your word has proceeded forth, we know that we may not receive the answers, but we can receive your peace yet still. And so, Lord, we ask for your peace. We ask for your peace in our heart. We ask for your peace in our mind. We ask for your peace in our lives. We ask for your peace in our homes. We ask for your peace in our churches. We ask for your peace in our corporate world. We ask for your peace, O oh Lord, upon our businesses. We ask for your peace upon our education. We ask for your peace, O oh God, upon our government. We ask for your peace upon our politics. We ask for your peace in every sphere of our lives. Lord, it is not by might, neither is it by power, but by your spirit. And so, Lord, we ask for this grace. Administer your grace of peace that we will adapt to the situations that are around us, even the circumstances of our life. We know that there is a grace that comes upon a man that makes us adapt to situation day by day and so lord we ask that you do this thing by your spirit and so we ask that take all the praise take all the glory forget us not O god and we promise you all the praise even now and forever for thine is the kingdom for thine is the power for thine is the glory even now and forever in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Um, people of God, this is your brother and your deacon Philip from the Salvation Prayer Mission Worldwide. This is Christ, the entirety foundation. Um, this is the doctrine and balance section. Um, people of God, like we have seen, this is how God does his work in our life. This is also one of the ways that God does his work in our life. Continue to follow us, um, subscribe, like, and share, and also put your comments there. You can also add what God is adding to, to his message so that we can, we can also be blessed. You can, you can share, um, follow us on all social media platforms. We are on YouTube, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, we are on Twitter, which is X. We are we are on all the social media platform, Christ the Entirety Foundation. We are on podcast. We are on podcast. Follow us and listen to our messages and we believe that you'll be blessed. God bless you so much. Thank you. See you same time next week. Bye-bye.